Number 55. Determine the Kb for the nitrite ion, which is NO2 minus, in a 0.10 molarity solution. This base is 0.0015% ionized. Okay, so we basically have to solve for the Kb, right? And Kb, the B in the Kb stands for a base. So what's going on here is that the NO2 ion is acting as a base. And I kind of know that this is a base because there's no acidic hydrogens, right? There's no hydrogens here. Generally, if you see a hydrogen in the front, it's an acid. Now, the first thing before we're, you know, going into finding out KBs or KAs, remember, they come from balanced equations. So the first thing is, is I'm just going to write a balanced equation. Now, remember, all acids and bases are always in water. So in this case, I'm going to say that my nitrite ion, NO2 minus, is going to be reacting with H2O. Nitrite is one of my, uh, it's not one of my six strong bases, right? So it's going to be at equilibrium. It's not going to dissociate 100%. And then remember, we just have to find the conjugate acid, right? So NO2, since this is a base, will always gain a hydrogen. So it would be H NO2. And then vice versa, if this is the acid reacting with the base, the acid, remember, always drops a hydrogen. So this would now just be OH minus. And another way to know whether you're dealing with an acid or a base is that since we produced OH minus in solution, we're going to solve for a KB. But if you solved or you have H3O plus at the end of the day, that's a KA value. That's an acid. Okay. So. KB values are found by doing concentration of products divided by reactants. And remember, this is always at equilibrium. So remember last uh, chapter, we had to set up ice tables. We're going to do the same here. Now, just know that all of your ions, all the ones that are charged, are always going to be aqueous. And your conjugate acids or your conjugate bases... So for example, HNO2, that's going to be aqueous as well. The water, however, is just the solvent, and that's a liquid. Now, let's do our ICE. So we saw this in last chapter, and let me just actually bring this a little bit down. Let's see. We saw the ice table a little bit last chapter, but we're going to be doing a lot of it this, this time around. And I think we're good. Let's just bring this up a little bit. Let's see. Okay, perfect. Okay. So now I stands for initial. Now, the only thing that they told us was that you had a 0 0.10 molarity solution. The solution that they're referring to is that we have NO2 minus. So you started off with 0 0.10 molarity of this initial solution. So that means the I, the 0 0.10, is going to be for the nitride ion. So I have 0 0.10. Now keep in mind, when you're doing this ice table, you're only allowed to have molarities in here. But since we're dealing with molarities, we're good to go. Now remember, since H2O is a liquid, I could care less about any of the numbers here. Because remember, liquids do not matter in your KB expression. So now... Let's move on. They didn't state that I started off with any HNO2, and they didn't state that I started off with any OH-. They just told me that 0.0015% was ionized. Your ionization always happens at equilibrium. This is not what you started with. So since they didn't say that I started off with any HNO2 or OH-, zero and zero. Okay. Now comes the C, which is change. Now, at this point in time, right, we don't really know how much was changed, right, from initial to equilibrium, because that's what E stands for. E stands for the equilibrium values. So as of right now, I'm just going to say that since we started off with nothing, you can only go up from there. So the product side would have to be plus, and the reactant side would have to be minus. But now by how much? 
Well, as of right now, we don't really know. So we're just going to label it as x. And remember, you always go by what the ratio is in the front. But since acids and bases, they're always going to be like 1 to 1 to 1. It's just going to be easy with minus x, plus x, and x. So now your equilibrium is just your initial and your change coming together. So for NO2, it would be 0 0.10 minus x. And then 0 plus x is just x. 0 plus x is just x. But now let's tie in this percent ionization. Whenever they give you a percent ionization, in this case it's 0.0015%, we think of one formula, and that's this formula right here. And I'm going to maybe just move it over here. Your percent ionization, if you're working with a base, and in this case we are, it's the concentration of OH- minus divided by your initial times 100. Now let's see. Well, they told us that the percent was 0.0015, right? That was the percent. We do know the initial concentration. They told us that it was 0.1 times 100 is just times 100. So we can actually solve for what the OH minus concentration is. Remember, ionization is always at equilibrium. So I can actually find out what that X is. Let's figure it out. 0 0.0015 equals something divided by something. We'll say X divided by 0 0.10 times 100. Solve for X. If you want to divide by 100, that's fine with me. And maybe I'll just pull this over here for now. So this gets rid of this. Calc is out. 0 0.0015 divided by 100. So I get 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x over 0 0.10. We can cross multiply now, so just times by 0.1. And now we get an x value of 1.5 times 10 to the negative sixth. And now we know that all of the x's, right, that was the OH minus. And that's over here, that's the x value. So this actually equals 1.5 times 10 to the negative six. This equals 1.5 times 10 to the negative sixth. And then this would be 0 0.10 minus 1 1.5 times 10 to the negative sixth. So let's see what that is. 0 0.1 minus 1 1.5 times 10 to the negative sixth. And since this is not the answer, I'm going to try not to round. So it's 0 0.0. I mean, it's very, very close to 0 0.1. But we have four nines. One, two, three, four and then an 8.5. And now these are your new equilibrium molarities that we're going to use for our KB expression because we still want to find out that KB. So let's see. Maybe if I can just move, if I could just make some room, let's put this maybe, uh-oh, what happened here? What didn't I take? The minus sign? Let's see. So let's move this over here. Okay. And now let's maybe move this to a corner just so that we have a little bit more room to work with. Okay. Now let's write out my KB expression, right? KB. Actually, I'm probably going to have to erase some of this. So if you need this, just pause the video. I'm just going to erase this just so that we have more room. So here it goes. Bye-bye. Now we got much more room to work with. So let's see. KB equals something divided by something. Remember, it's products divided by reactants. So it would be the two compounds. Remember, if you have two compounds in one side, it's multiplication. So we have HNO2 times OH minus divided by the NO2 minus, right? Products divided by reactants. Remember, liquids don't count. So now we're just going to plug in the values. So we got three numbers going on here. 
we have 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6, another 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6, and then we have 0 0.049s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 5. Calc-keys out. And we're going to find that KB value. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5th times that divided by that answer and two sig figs. So 2.3. 2.3 times 10 to the negative 11th. And it kind of makes sense. If your KB is very, 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 very low as what this one is, you're not going to ionize a lot. I mean, this isn't even 1%. So it kind of checks out. But that's the answer here, guys. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope to be seeing you all in later lessons. And if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Thank you so much for that. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.